Hello, YouTube. Welcome to the first ever Final Cut uh, Pro tutorial for YouTube. Well, for my YouTube channel, Dan on a Bouncy Castle. Rem remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. So, first of all, we're just going to be going over the basics in the first tutorial. Um, so, we're going to start off by looking at positioning and animating footage. So, we're going to get some footage. I'm going to use some footage from my film. These are just some random clips. I don't know what I'm bringing in here. Now, the way you do that, obviously, you can use. I like to use Finder. So, you just need a Finder window. And then you can literally drag and drop into your browser panel, into your project panel. Um, this is giving me a warning because my footage is not the most, is not best suited for Final Cut. Um, oh. This is not a problem for me. I'm going to press OK. So we're going to bring in a couple of the clips. So you can shift select. And the way you can bring them in is you can drag them onto here. It gives you some options. But I'm man of the, my old ways and just like to put them in here. Um, now the first time you open a project is going to give you this sort of option. So you can press uh, yes. And that's basically going to match this setup for your footage. Now as you can see this footage is upside down and that's because it was shot using it was shot using a um, 35 millimeter adapter but we can rotate that. Now there's two ways to bring in footage I'm going to grab a footage and bring it in here um, you see the arrows pointing down and now it's pointing to the side. Now if I put it in down it's just going to put it exactly where it is and overwrite anything that's already there. However, if I make it so that it goes across, which I can do by lifting up slightly, up, down, up, and then that will push everything to the side. So it's inserted the clip where you told it to, and the clip that was there has been pushed to the end. What a clever piece of software. Okay, so... First of all, we're going to mess with the footage. So double click to select this bit of footage, and that's opened it up in our viewer panel here. We're going to go to motion, and all it is is it's upside down. So on the rotation, we can just hit um, select where it says zero and just change it to 180, like that. Beautiful. Now, what's happened is that we've got this red line here, and that basically means it's it hasn't been rendered and if you try and play it back it's going to play the audio because you haven't changed the audio but the video is not there and a shortcut you're going to want to remember and you're going to be using quite frequently is command R and that is going to render your thing now uh, render your the clips that need rendering um, I have not saved my project it's telling me that you want to save it straight away um, however, I'm not going to for tutorial purposes. I'm just going to press OK. That's basically saying it's going to save it to a default location rather than to an actual save location that you've designated. And when we play this back, we can see that the footage is now the right way around. Um, now, by positioning it, what I mean is that we can like have a clip up in this corner and a clip down here. So the way to do that. I'm going to grab my another clip and lift it up over the top of the other one and bang it there. And that is going to give me two clips over the top of each other. But you can only see the top one because that's how it works. It's like a hierarchy. However, audio clips will all play together. I'm going to shorten it by dragging the end in. And I'm going to double click to give me the settings for this video clip. I'm going to scale it down, and where it says center, if you click that button there, and then you can grab the footage, and you can move it where you want it. Now I can grab the other one, grab the center, move it where I want it, and also scale it down. And then grab the center again move it to where you want it. A bit like a plain white tease music video. Now this will take actually a while longer to render. 
obviously not too long because because you've matched the the sequence with the clip settings it won't take too long to render if you don't do that then it can take a lot longer so now I've got these two clips and there's a rolling edit tool which is pretty cool you see this like thing that looks like whatever that looks like you can use it grab your footage which is this top one and basically you're changing this location like that so what that's done now is that it's moved the clip along um, so basically the point that was this bit of the footage has been moved to like there and that bit of the footage has been moved and it just rolls the clip along say you didn't want that part of the clip well that's what this is for um, so now we've got two clips and the great thing about this is that it's keyframeable so say I wanted it to start off with this video clip and then um, scale, scale down and we can see them both well that's pretty easy to do what I'm going to do, I want it to finish about here I want it to end up like this about at this point so bring your scrubber through to about there scrubber is that the right word? God knows. And this is the keyframe button. So we're going to click there because we've changed the center. We've changed the scale. Oh, wrong clip. Now, before you start animating anything, you always want to make sure you've got the right clip selected. I was actually animate, adding keyframes to our bottom clip, which is this one here. But I want to double click on this one, make sure I've got it selected. And then keyframe center and scale. Beautiful. Then scroll to the beginning of the clip and I'll set scale to 100 because that's the default scale and the center. If I just get rid of that, changing it to zero and to zero. Like that. Beautiful. Now, if I render that, We can play it back, hit the spacebar. Now it's going to show a bit stuttery on yours because my screen capture program is only set to render 1.5, sorry, um, 20 frames a second, but it's going very smoothly here. Um, if you add an effect to footage, I'll cover this in another tutorial, like the color correction, if I check and drop that onto my top layer. It doesn't show up in the motion, because obviously it's not motion, it shows up in the filters. And the good thing about everything in Final Cut is that everything uses the same kind of keyframe um, layout. So if you're messing with settings for one thing, you can pretty much translate it for everything else. And some effects have this, have what's called a um, visual layout. So our color correction here, you can see also has... Um, a visual button if you click that it will take you to this color correction thing then you can do some color correcting if you look down in the bottom in this footage here it's messing with the settings and I can like boost the saturation or make it black and white but adding filters will take a while to render so I would depending on the speed of your Mac um, so always be wary of that and color correction I would leave to last. You might want to do a basic one to get the feel. Go action. Beautiful. You've learned how to keyframe and animate footage in Final Cut. Congratulations, well done. Rate, comment and subscribe. I'm Dan Allen from Dan on a Bouncy Castle.